Welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we are going to explore this fabulous little baby sweater. You have been asking for it and I said okay let's do it. We are doing the baby series for January 2014. This is called the flower petal sweater and I'll put a link in the more information so you can access the free video for this. This just took me one evening to do and this pattern is available for six months, nine months, 12 and 18 and it's featuring and Getty's baby yarn and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. So let's do a quick review of your yarn. I'm using the Ann Gettys yarn and when I turn it over you're going to look for the gauge. So if you're substituting your yarn at all with any other Red Heart product you're going to want to make sure that you see a light and then the number three because that's dictating the gauge of the yarn itself just like so. We are going to be using a 4.25 millimeter crochet hook today size G and if you're substituting with Super Saver you're going to want to pay attention to this because the Super Saver is a four and so then your sweat will end up being bigger. So you need to pay attention to small little things like that so you don't really end up with a size that's way out of alignment for the young one that's going to be wearing it. So let me direct your eyes to the pattern here. It's available in the more information link. Just want to uh, bring your eyes to the point of understanding how to change sizes. So if you've never done clothing before, if you've never done child's clothing, you're going to notice here that there is different sizes available within the same pattern. So it says directions are for six months. So if you follow the directions and just pay attention to the first number, then you'll end up with a six month. So it says the changes for nine, 12 and 18 months are in the parentheses. So the finished chest the first number will be six months, the second number is nine, the third number is twelve and the fourth number is eighteen. So anytime you see these particular parentheses throughout your project it says rows number eight that would be six months and then etc 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 going along and then it will say DC in the next seventeen and then you'll see uh, 19, 20, 24. So depending on what size you're working on is the number that you'll be paying attention to and this makes the directions look really long but in actual sense you're only using just a section of it because it's giving you all the sizes that you need. So that's just a little helpful hand for you today. And finally looking at the second page of the directions you will notice that there's little diagrams like this. These are really extremely helpful to you. So what happens here is that the sweater is divided into language and so if you really look at the top here, the top section here, this is called the yoke and you'll see that it's divided in two. That doesn't mean that there's two different sides to this project and you see how it's going around just like so that's a neck size. So this yoke is just basically starting on one side coming back around to the other. So that's just the seam line that's just down the middle and then the skirt is the same way. So it's a skirt on both sides as we go around. So this gives you a great indication. Remember what I just said about the parentheses? That's what these mean here. So this total diameter here would be 20 if it was six months and etc etc and again the heights and the lengths just like so are indicated in parentheses to give you the sizing that it should be and that should be a really helpful hand for you as well. So without further ado I'm going to get started and we're going to work from the top of our sweater all the way down to the bottom. We worry about the, the collar section right here. That is one of the last things that we, we will do and the sleeves are one of the last things. So we're going to start off just with the yoke area as we come around down all the way. So let's begin right now. So to begin today I want you to start off with about a 12 inch tail. We're going to use that afterward in order to sew in that so that it can be totally hidden. Let's start off with a slip knot and I want you to chain 50 regardless of what size you're working with. Chain 50 is the right thing. So just immediately just start chaining. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Go all the way to 50. I'll meet you back up in just a moment and we'll start up. So we're going to start off with row number one and this is the first trick of today. So I want you to have a beautiful clean finish at the end of your project and if I just do into the chains as normal you're going to end up with a seam line that doesn't look so favorable. So what I'm going to suggest to you is that we're going to turn our chains over and I just want to read the instructions first before I show you. So it says to double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and then two double crochet into the next chain and then double crochet into the next um, three chains and then repeat going all the way across. There's more to it but we'll review the rest of that in just a moment. So it says the fourth chain from the hook so let's count back. So one, two, three, four and normally I would go into the front side but I want you to turn it over and you will see that there's one string that's right in the middle and that's where I want you to go. So we're going to double crochet so I'm just going to go in there and it's like a bump 
on the back. It's just one string and what this uh, does is that it turns your chain over to be upside down which is what I want you to do. Just like so. So you can see now the chain appears upside down. So remember what it said? It says two chains then into the next or two double crochets into the next uh, chain and this is our repeat pattern. So we want to continue to just go into the back of the chain. And what this does is it really puts that clean edge on the bottom side because that is actually the top of your sweater. And now for the next three chains it's going to be one double crochet crochet each. And remember the pattern is a repeat after this. So I find because my hook is a little bit smaller, my yarn is a little bit thinner is that it takes me a little bit to get started but once you get this first chain off the rest of the project blazes through pretty quickly. So the repeat pattern then all the way across then is two double crochets in, in the next and then the next three chains are, are one double crochet each. And I want you to go almost right to the end and when I'm going to pick back up and I'm going to show you what to do in the final few stitches because you'll notice that in the final of every one of these going back and forth is that there's something different going on on the edge. So continue that same pattern. So two double crochets into the next and then the next three chains are by themselves uh, with the double crochet and keep repeating. So I've now made it all the way to the other side and as per the instructions it says, it says in the last two chains it says two double crochet into the next and then double crochet into the last. You should know that I ended up with two anyway so it works out to be the same as if you were to follow the repeat pattern. So it's two double crochet and then just the final stitch is one double crochet by itself. So because you've been doing this and adding in um, the two double crochets into the same stitch it's caused your work to do a semicircle and this is the very top of your sweater. So let's uh, begin row number two next. So let's begin to turn our work and here we go. So as per the instructions it says chain three and it says count as a double crochet here and throughout. So at the beginning of our instructions when it says chain three that counts as a double crochet. It says double crochet into the next and then the next one is two double crochets into the next and then double crochet into the next four. So let's uh, begin to go slowly. So we're going to chain three. So one, two and three and it says double crochet into the next. So we're just going to double crochet into the next stitch available. And then it says to two double crochets into the next. So we're going to put two into the next one. One and two. And this is where the repeat pattern start, uh, started if you see the asterisk. And it says to double crochet into the next four. So one, two, three and four. So the repeat pattern then if you're going all the way across until we get to the very end is that we are going to do it. the next one is two double crochets into the next as per the repeat pattern and then the next four are by themselves. So continue that same uh, configuration going all the way across. Very easy, easy to follow along. So I'll meet you back up before we finish the line because the end of the instructions are like the last one. There's something happening that's different at the end. So we're coming up to the end of row number two and you have to follow the instructions there. It says in the last three stitches double crochet into the next and then double crochet into the final two double crochets. So I kind of added a bit just to make it a lot more sense for you. So you have to really pay attention to where your stitches are going at this point and so I still have four stitches left here and I really kind of wanted to show you this because some people think that this end piece is part of the first one so therefore they start ending it early. So you have to make sure that you can identify your stitches in order to work. So now I officially have three stitches left. I know it's kind of hard to see. So here's one, two, and the chain is the third. So as per the instructions the first one of the three is two double crochets into it. Okay and then the next two double crochets are going to be by themselves. So that was the top of this one here and then the final one is into the chain. Do not forget to do that because that makes a complete difference on the counts of your particular baby. So let's uh, move along to row number three next. So let's turn our work and very easy. To begin it says chain three, double crochet into the next two double crochets and then two double crochet into the next double and then double crochet into the next five which is your repeat pattern. So let's begin. So we're going to chain three. So one, 
two and three and so it says double crochet into the next two double crochets. So the first two stitches will be double crochet each. So here comes your repeat pattern which is the next one. So the next one is your two double crochets into the next. So put two in here and here is your repeat pattern. So there's your two. So then it says the next five double crochets or the five stitches are gonna be your one double crochet each for number five of them. <laughs> I went out, I went the long way around on those instructions. So make sure that you have one double crochet in each of the next five. You know my brain and my fingers just automatically do the work and sometimes explaining it is really tough. So we have five by themselves. So the repeat pattern then is the next one will be two together. So there will be two uh, double crochets into that stitch and then we go with our five again. So do that all the way close to the edge on the other side and we'll meet back up and finish it off because there's something special on that side as well. So we're just finishing up row number three and in the final instructions it says for the last three stitches it says two double crochet into the next and then double crochet into the last two. So that's just a very easy one. So just one each. Sorry, two double crochets in the first one and then the final two. So do you see how you have two stitches left? That's the biggest concern that new crocheters have is they don't recognize that final chain as a stitch. So that concludes around row number three and you can really clearly see that you do have three rows. So one, two and three. So let's begin turn our work and we're going to move up to row number four next. To begin row number four very easy again chain three, one, two and three and it says to double crochet into the next uh, two double crochets. So let's just do that. It's just easier to go as we read it. So one into the next two, uh, one double crochet into the next two stitches and then here's the repeat pattern. Two double crochet into the next double crochet and then double crochet into the next six. So the first one is going to be uh, two into the same one which is your repeat pattern and then the next six are by themselves for a double crochet. So continue to do that all the way across uh, with the repeat pattern. I'll meet you back up on the other side. We'll finish off the final again and this will conclude then row, row number four together. So we're just coming along to the end of row number four and it says across to the last four stitches two double crochet into the next double crochet and then double crochet into the last three. So we have to make sure this is the first time we've been leaving three if you've been recognizing the, the pattern here is that this one now we're leaving the four. So we're going to do the first one is two double crochets into that one and then the last three stitches are going to be a double crochet by themselves. So very very easy to finish that off. So that would conclude round number four together and you just have to turn your work. Let's begin on round number five next. In row number five, let's go. It says to chain three. So let's start off with just chain three. Now we'll go our way through it. it. Says double crochet into the next three double crochets. So the next three are going to be by themselves. So, so the yoke at the top has to grow evenly, and that's why you don't see a consistent pattern um, as far as like matching up the stitches for each other like you normally would on like an, an afghan, etc. So it says two double crochets into the next uh, double crochet, and then double crochet into the next seven. So here's your repeat pattern. So we're going to do two into this one, and so now the next seven are going to be by themselves. So let's do that. And so then the repeat pattern then is two into one and then seven standing alone by themselves. And we repeat that all the way to the end. Uh, we're going to stop a little early just like we have been and just review uh, the final few stitches that are left in order to follow this pattern along. So continue along. I'll meet you back up on the end of round, uh, row number five. So coming up onto the end of row number five, it says across to the last four stitches, two double crochets into the next double crochet and then double crochet into the next three. So we have our four stitches left just like so. So the first one is going to be two into that one. And then the final three are going to be one double crochet on their own. And that will conclude round number five. Now if you're doing the six month version we only have two more rounds to go. Everybody else has a little more rounds and I'll be explaining that as we head to that point. So let's move along to row, uh, row number six and let's turn our work and begin. 
let's begin row number six. So we're gonna chain up three, one, two, and three. And as per the instructions says, chain three, double crochet into the next three double crochet, and then two double crochet into the next double crochet, and then double crochet into the next eight double crochet. <laughs> Crazy stuff here. So let's, so we've already done our chain three, and double crochet into the next uh, three double crochets. <laughs> Sometimes these directions, just saying them out loud makes them sound ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so we have the three standing alone by itself, and it says two double crochets into the next. So we're, let's do that. And now here, this is your repeat pattern. So this is your two into that one. So your repeat pattern is that we're gonna go eight by themselves, and then two double crochets, and then eight by themselves again. So let's uh, just continue to do that all the way across, and we'll meet back at the end of the line. So coming up to the end of row number six, we have, it says across to the last five stitches, two double crochet into the next, and then double crochet into the next four. So one, two, three, four, five. So the first one is going to be two into that one, two double crochets, and then the final four are by themselves. So double crochet each, and that will conclude off row number six right here. So let's uh, turn our work in just a moment and move up to row number seven. And row number seven is the final of the six month size, but I will be reviewing the other sizes in just a moment after that as well. So let's continue, turn your work and move up to row number seven. So let's uh, begin row number seven for our six month sizes. This is your last row for the yoke area. So let's uh, begin chain number three. One, two, three, so chain three times. It says double crochet into the next three double crochets. So we're just gonna put one into the next three. Very easy. And then following along, it says to two double crochet into the next double crochet and then double crochet into the next nine. So here's your repeat pattern. So we have a two into the first and then the nine are gonna be standing alone. And then two again and nine. So do that all the way to the end and I'll meet you back up the other side, the other side also. Um, like the rest of the uh, rows has been slightly different as well. So we'll meet back up in the last few stitches of this row. So on the other side of row number seven, it says to cross to the last six stitches, two double crochet into the first, and then double crochet into the final five. So the next first one here is going to be two into this one. And then the final five double crochets will be one double crochet each. So very easy to do. And for our six month old uh, people, we are done this particular yoke. And in the next one uh, part of this tutorial, just I'm just gonna run briefly over what the other people need to do. And then we're gonna carry on to form the armholes in just after that. So stay tuned and I'll be right back. So right now the yoke is finished for our six month old people and this is what it will look like for all sizes at this moment. And you can see that it is a semicircle and essentially the armholes happen because just on the shoulder area it will be folded in half so that you end up with armholes that are on the sides just like so. So very easy to do and so the stitch work then becomes less and less because this is going over top of the shoulders at the same time. Uh, once we get into the skirt area there you'll find that it's going to blaze along really quickly. So let's uh, review the instructions for those that are going on to the bigger sizes and let's pull our instructions out right now. So for those that are going from the 9, 12, or 18 months, we have finished on row number 7. This is for the 6 months. So you see 9, 12, and 18. This has to be done if you're carrying along. So the 9 month is here. So you will notice here it says 12 and 18 months. So this is the last section, this next instruction. And it's just like you have been doing along with me. Just read it along like you've been reading at the bottom of the screen and just finish it off. For row, uh, for the sizes 12 to 18 months, you will do then row, row number 9 and follow the instructions. And then you will see that um, here is 18 months only. So this is the end for the 12 right here and so then you will finish off for the 18 months right here and this will bring us right back down here. So regardless of what size you're working on, we'll all begin to pick up right here and this is where the parentheses uh, come into play because now that you are moving to all the different three sizes is that the parentheses are gonna be indicating different things and we'll review that in just a moment as well. So let's uh, move along. We're gonna go on to the next one. This will be row number eight for all those that are in the six month. It's row number nine, 10, and 11 for those in the alternative uh, sizes that we're doing. So let's uh, move along right now. 
So let's begin. We are doing the front, back, and sleeves area right now. So this is for the six month version but I will explain the others while we're here. And so this is row number eight for six months. It's nine for um, the next one, ten for the next, and eleven for the next. <laughs> I'm kind of cheating there. So let's uh, begin. We are going to do a chain one just like so and then it says to double crochet into the next 17. So you'll see that in the parentheses are there. You'll see 17, 19, 22, 24. Those are the different sizes. So when it says double crochet into the next 17, that's for the small size. That's what we're doing right now, the six month. And then the other ones are for the other sizes. So regardless of what size you're working on, just follow the one that's in the parentheses that makes sense for you. So for me, we're gonna double crochet for 17. So now I have my 17 in. If you did the bigger sizes you will either have 19, 22, or 24 double crochets. Now it says chain six and then there's more parentheses. So if you have the different sizes you have to look at the one in the parentheses that makes sense for you. For the uh, six month size we are just going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So look in the parentheses because you either will have eight, eight, or ten. So now it says to skip the next 30, okay, and that's for the small size version, the six month, and then the parentheses 32, 32, 34 is for the other sizes. So we're gonna skip 30. So we're just gonna count over. I'm just gonna put my hook down, which is easier for me, and I'm gonna count 30 over. So one, two, three, four, five. So now that I've skipped my 30 for my particular size, you're gonna skip others if you're doing the other size. You wanna make sure that you are going into the next one after the 30 is done. So I have 30 and so essentially I'm going into the next one after so it would be 31 and we are going to double crochet again. So I'm just gonna immediately pick it up and just go in to there. And I'm just gonna do the first one and I just wanna verify that I did count the number of stitches over. It does make a difference. You don't want the sleeves to appear to be a different size. So just go ahead and count once again. Make sure you did get it and make sure that you started on the on the next one available. So if it, you've skipped 30, this should be 31 and etc. So I have verified my item. So what we have here is we're double crocheted in the next and then what it says here is that 36 is for the six month, 40, 46, and 50 for the different sizes. And this is going the very back of the sweater. So for my size being the six month, I need to go 36. This first one I just did counts as one of them. So I'm gonna go 36 double crochets all together for the six month size and your size may be different. So do that all the way across. Well not all the way across. Just do it until the number says. So I'm going to do up, up until 36. You may have 40, 46, or 50 and then we'll meet back up again and we're going to form the other harm hole on the other side. So now we've come all the way across the back and now it's time to do the other side of the arm sleeve. It's a, basically what we've already done. So we're going to be chaining six if you're doing the six month. So two, three, four, five, and six. So we're gonna be doing that and so your chaining will be different depending on the size. Just look at the parentheses. It'll either be six, eight, eight, or ten. And now it says to skip the next 30, 32, 32, 34. So you have to pick the one that you're doing. In my case we are doing 30. So I'm gonna jump all the way to the 30 and I'm gonna double crochet into the 31 space which will begin the next section on the other side of the front of the sweater. So once you skip your number that you needed, I skipped 30 so this is 31 here and then you have to double crochet across the top or across the top which is the actual front of the sweater. And in my case it will be says uh, double crochet into the final um, last 18, 20, 23, 25 depending on what size you're going. Uh, my size is because it's six months it will be 18. And so I will just double crochet myself all over. And if you're off by one or two stitches you know you can always improv on this because in the next one we're going to start doing some fan work to create the dress at the bottom and that's where it can be kind of forgiving in order to kind of fix up your messes if you've done anything along the way. So carry on. I'll meet you back up in just a moment. We're going to turn around and begin the dress section next. So let's do a quick review. You now have your arm sleeves in. You can see them here and that's where the baby's going to put their arms through. Very easy. Now the thing that you should notice at this point is that you have the front panel here and then you have the sleeve and all of this stitch work on the other side here we don't have to worry about that when we're going all the way back and forth when it comes to the skirt. So in actual fact your rows have gotten much smaller so you're just going the front panel back and then front as you're going along. So regardless of what size you're working on right now we're ready for the skirt and let's begin that next. 
So let's start row number one of the skirt and it says to chain three, skip the first two double crochets, fan in the next double crochet. What is a fan? So when you go and look at the instructions, when you go back to the upper page, it says special abbreviations and the fan has a value. It says double crochet and then brackets chain one double crochet four times. So what I want to show you here is that how to read those because there's two sets of brackets here. So let's uh, begin our first element here. So we're gonna chain one, or sorry, chain three, one, two and three and it says to skip the first double, two double crochets. So one and two we're gonna skip and we're gonna fan into the next. So here's how those abbreviations are working because they're in a brackets. We are going to double crochet into the first. So in the next set of brackets, the chain one DC is four times. So we're gonna do those, that in particular four times. So here we go. Chain one, double crochet into the same stitch. Chain one, double crochet, that was for repeating for two. Chain one, double crochet again, that was for repeating of three. Chain one and double crochet again. So you're thinking, well how are you gonna keep track of that? See how you have five here? One, two, three, four, five. You should have five going up like that. That's your fan and there should be a chain one in between each. So it becomes very easy to be able to recognize this. So moving along in the fans as we're going across, the only difference of the sizes now is that there's longer distances to go the larger size your sweater but the fan is still the same and the stitches still work out to be the same. So let's uh, begin again. So it says to skip the next five, one, two, three, four, five, go into the six for a fan. So wrap going in and we are going for double crochet first and then chain one and double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet and I'm done. So how do I know if I'm done that quick? other than being fabulous. Um, the thing is, is that I'm looking for five. So one, two, three, four, five and you know you're done. So it's really quite easy. So we're about to run into an armhole. So here's how we operate that. So we're still gonna just carry along as if this is the real material underneath except for is, is that we're just working with the chain instead. So when we come along, we just have to skip another five. One, two, three, four, five, go to the six for a fan. So we're gonna uh, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one. Okay, and double crochet, chain one. And I'm looking for my five, just like so. So again, we're gonna skip over to this section here. This is the armholes. We still wanna count the stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. Go to the six, it just happens to be on the chain in the arm just use that. So you have to use that. So we're just gonna do that again. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet and we're just operating within the arm like so. So carry along and do that all the way across. Just do the same thing on the other side of the arm and you are good to go on this particular row number one. So we're here at the end and now it's time to go into the very final stitches and the stitches just happen to be work out. It says uh, go right to the last three double crochets and then we start with that. So it says to skip the last thing. So we're essentially we have our last fan in so I just want to double crochet into the final just to finalize this off just like that and just very easy just like this. So we're gonna turn and move up to your next row and this I tell you this is when it gets really quick and you can see that this is starting to look a lot more interesting on this particular project. So let's begin row number two together. Rows number two and three that we're about to do is the repeat pattern for the duration of the length of this sweater. And when we finish off at the very bottom before we change the color, we always have to finish off with row number two and then we change the color and do a final row number three. And we will review that in just a little while as well. So let's begin. We are gonna simply just chain up one and we are going to single crochet into the first double crochet. So this is how we always are going to start it just like this and it says single crochet uh, into the next and then chain three. So here is the repeat pattern for you. So we're gonna chain three and coming back in. So we're gonna go into the next, see this fan? We're gonna go into this next space here. This is the chain one space, chain three. Coming back into the space, 
next space that's available for a single crochet, chain three. And then we come in to the, the final for a single crochet. So when we're doing this, we're gonna be playing, we're gonna have like three loops like this on the top of each one of the fans. One, two, and three. And you can see this. This loop here should be in the very middle of the five. So what we're gonna do now is that we finished off with a single crochet. We immediately jump to the next fan and we single crochet into the next one. Just like this. And then we begin again. So chain three. Single crochet, chain three. Single crochet, chain three single crochet. And it's just like we've already done. You can see the three loops. So we immediately just skip over to the next fan and immediately single crochet into the next. I actually will admit to you this is an outtake uh, that I had before. Um, I had actually gone past this well beyond this pass and then I realized that I had these major gapping spaces like major major in between the fans and I realized that I had chain three in between going in between these fans in the middle and it created really huge gaps that were not very nice. So you know you just have to pay attention that when you're working with these fans that you're just single crochet and then single crochet in the next before starting to do the chain three once again. So do that all the way across to the end and when we come back I'll just uh, finalize that end for you and move up to round number three and again round number two and three is the repeat pattern for the remainder of this sweater going down. So we're coming up all the way to the end and we just continue along as normal right until the final gapping of the final fan and then simply at the very end we just have to single crochet into the top of the turning chain just like this. So that was a conclusion of row number two. So let's start off with row number three. So we're going to just turn our work just like this. And so row number three is exceptionally easy because you have these gapping spaces that are in the top of each one of the fans. The fans just directly sit right on top of each other. So to begin row number three we're going to chain up three like so and it says to fan in the skip over uh, the next chain three space and fan into the next. So we skip over the first one we go to the second. How I identify that you can see that there's three gapping spaces one two and three. The middle one is in direct alignment with the one below. These fans are sitting right directly on top of each other. So to do a fan it's just double crochet chain one. It's just like what you've already done. So chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet and we want to get a total of five of those spokes again like so. So one, two, three, four, five and then immediately we just reach over and we go to the middle one of the next fan. So just look over. So you're going to skip one and two, go to the third gapping space and begin the fan again. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, just like that. So there you go, there it's in. So you're just going to go all the way over and just finish it off. I'm going to repeat, I'll get, get over there, I'll show you how to finish this row off. And then you're going to repeat two and three all the way down. You will see that it says to repeat two and three until the skirt area measures four inches if you're doing the newborns or the six month size. The, it'll have four, four, five and five for the other different sizes. So this is the distance between the yoke at the top of the sweater all the way down to the bottom. Now when we go to change our color at the bottom this here is row number three. This is the final. I have actually changed it in the directions that the last two rows were one color. You don't have to do that. You can follow the instructions to just make this wavy one color or you can just leave the entire thing one color. The other thing that you have an option to because you're the creator is that you can make this skirt a lot longer if you wish. If you think it's too short you can always just add more fans until you're satisfied etc. So I'm going to take you to the end of this row number three, show you how to finish that row off and then you're going to do the remainder of the distance on your own going down and then I'll show you how to do the bottom edge and then we'll do the arm sleeves after that. When you get to the end of row three all you're just going to do is double crochet into the final stitch on 
the below. So you just have to keep repeating rows number two and three to get to the distance. I'm gonna go my four inches as it's saying and when I come back I'll have four inches done and when we make sure that when you come back you need to be done on row number two. So you have to have it with these chain spaces that we had on this row right here uh, as your final before moving on to do the final edging. So do that and I'll meet you back up in just a few moments and I'll be crocheting this off camera in the meantime. So off camera I've done my four inches and the final row remember what I said has to be row number two. It has to be these loops because the final final of the trim is the same thing that you see in the fans here. So let's uh, finish off this color. We're just going to change. Remember you can change colors at any point in this project. It doesn't have to be where it says in the pattern. So we're going to grab the next color. This one's called Lily. It's again another Ann Gettys. Uh, yarn and I'm going to start it off with a slip knot. It's not technically proper um, but it's the way that I like to begin just to make sure. I also do leave a longer tail here so that I can use a darning needle to seal that in afterward because the worst thing you can do is have a baby um, um, have a problem with this. So what I want to do is that I want to before I finish it off in the total and I want to make sure I just come back and have two loops left onto my hook. Slip on the white here and pull the white through just like this. And I want to trim my yarn which I've already done and so now I'm ready to turn my work and do the final edge just like so. So I want to trap in these stragglers on the top and I'm going to use a darning needle at the end of the project to uh, seal the deal and gilt those in there so that a baby doesn't have to worry about seeing those or even grabbing onto them at all. So we're just going to simply do exactly what we've been doing. This is row number three and it's just with a new color. It's just chaining three and we can pull this nice and tight afterward and immediately just jump into the top one as always just like so. Chain one and that's the fan. Okay, we're just doing what you already know how to do, but we're using a different color to provide a little bit of an interest um, to this particular project. I'm going to let the stragglers now just fall into the background and I'm going to put those in with the darning needle afterward. And so we just have to make sure we do have our five here. And then we immediately just begin going to the next fan over here and start a fan over on the other side. So there you go. So that would be how you would finish off the bottom edge. When we come back we're going to start doing the arm sleeves together and what you need to determine at this point too while I'm, while I'm doing this is that you have to determine what is the good side and what is the bad side for yourself because at, once you get those arm sleeves in you're going to have to commit to which side that you like the best before doing it because that is going to make a bit of a difference on the way that your project looks from that point onward. So I uh, continue to do this all the way at the end. Fasten off, weave in your ends. You can use a darning needle at this point to hide them in if you wish or wait till the end like I did with the original project but that's up to you. So here we have the sweater and the bottom trim is now done. I have fastened off and it looks fabulous and the top yoke is almost done. We just have to do the sleeves and you will see that, see how the um, the top of the yoke area, you see how it naturally opens up like that. That's part of the characteristics of this. So when you go to apply a button, you can just choose any part right in the front etc. to be able to do that. So it's just really quite easy to do and you can slip a, a, a button through these particular double crochets. So let's begin. We have to commit to what you think is the outside and what you think is the inside. The reason for it is that we have to make sure that we start both sleeves from the same point of view. So you have just to look at it and determine which is which. So I've determined that this is going to be my good side and so I want to make sure that I continue with that same thought process. So let's begin. We're going to do the sleeves. The sleeves is really very simple. It's only one row all the way around and so it's just very quick and easy and let's start that next. So let's begin the sleeves. We need to know where we're going to be joining it and we're going to be joining it right on the underside. So when a child is sitting there with their arms down you will not see where you've joined this anyway. So it says to there on join C in the first, second, second or fourth, those are the parentheses depending on the size, a double crochet of the skip sleeve stitches uh, in either opening. So what I want to do is that I want to take this, the new yarn, create a slip knot because that's what I prefer and I want to create the idea here. So I want to go into this right here in the middle of the chain. So that's where we're going to start. So we're going to create 
the same thing that we've done on the skirt but on the sides of the sleeves. So I'm just going to uh, fasten this and then I'm going to chain three. So we're going to pretend we're doing a row in actual fact we're doing a round. So let's chain three. Okay so the fastening counts as one chaining there. And so now it says to skip over if you remember. So we're going to skip over two, go to the third and this just happens. So we're going to go all the way around the sleeve here at this point. And we're going to do a fan as norm, as fan like we've already done in the skirt. So let's try that again. So we're just going into the side stitches here and a fan. So it's double crochet, chain one, double crochet and keep doing that until you get your five in there. Really easy. I have to give the designer a lot of credit to this one. This has been really easy. So then just like before we have to skip over. So one, two, three, four, five, go to the six and start the next one. And we're essentially just going to go around both of these sleeves in the same manner. I'm putting in the and so if you really look at the photo you can see that the the baby is having what appears to be petals on the sides of their arms and when in actual fact it's just these fans. So again we get another one in one, two, three, four, and five. Go to the six and continue that all the way around. We'll meet back up in just a moment and then you're going to be left to do the next one on your own uh, on the other side. You just remember that we fastened on with the outside of the project that we're looking at. So we make sure that when we turn this around that we fasten on looking at the outside of the project and don't turn it inside out at all. So I've come all the way around the sleeve and all I just want to do is just join it to the top of the chain three that we started off with. And I want to leave a generous tail so I'm going to just trim this nicely. And I just want to pull it up and I'm going to leave a generous tail so that when I go to seal this in I'm going to use a darning needle to go along the white. And so essentially I need you to do the other side now to have the perfect sleeves just like so. So you can see how fabulous that looks actually. I'm really quite happy with that. So I'm going to weave, I'm going to do the other side off camera. I'm going to weave in both ends and then we just have the collar left and this is almost done for today. So carrying right along we now have both sleeves in. You can see how fabulous it is on the front and the back side. Just really quite fun and easy just like so. So now we're ready to do the top collar. The top collar is really so simple as well and I'm going to show you that next. So we're almost done this particular project for today. To begin the collar we want to leave a little bit of a longer tail so that you can sew it in afterward. This is a very visible edge and so you don't want it to be um, the stragglers hanging out so you can use a darning needle to put that in. So as per the instructions we want to chain 63. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and please go all the way to 63 and we'll meet back up and we'll carry on. So row number one of the collar is very simple. It says to fan in the sixth chain from the hook and then skip the next five chains and fan in the next and go all the way and repeat to the last um, uh, three chains and then it has the final. So what we want to do is just skip uh, to the six. So we go to one, two, three, four, five, and six just like so and that's where we're going to do our fan. So our fan remember is the double crochet. Chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and we want to get in those five spokes just like we've been doing all along. You see how the fans are really um, exciting in this particular pattern. So as soon as you have your five you immediately skip five chains. So one, so see how this one's being pulled down? That is a chain right here. So don't, see if you went underneath, that is one. So don't forget to uh, not in, to include that. So one, two, three, four, and five. So we want to skip five chains and then go into the sixth and do another fan. So do that all the way to the end. I'll meet you back up at the end where we'll finalize this row off together and move along and we only have like three simple rows for this um, because it is the collar. There's not a lot to it. So just c continue to do the fan. When you get all the way to the end you are just going to double crochet into the final chain and it will work out just perfectly for you. So let's uh, simply we're going to turn our collar now and move up the next uh, round. The next, uh, sorry the next row. The next uh, two rows are exactly what you already know. So let's move along and do row number two next. 
Okay, row number two is very simple. We're just gonna simply chain up one and we are going to single crochet into the first double crochet and then single crochet into the next gap. It's just kind of exactly what you've already known. So we're simply just gonna chain three, come into the gap space of the next on the fan and one, two, and three, next gap space, one, two, and three, final gap space on the fan and just like before we skip over to the next fan and single crochet. So continue to do that all the way across. It's just exactly what you know and then row number three is repeating already what you know as well. So continue that and meet you back up in just a moment. Now coming back to the other side we just simply just want to single crochet into the final stitch just like so and now we want to turn our work and we simply just want to begin to do the fan again one more time. This is our very last row and you can start jumping up and down that you're done. So we're gonna chain three and immediately jump to the middle one just like you have been all along. I'll keep it nice and brief here because you know what you're doing. Put another fan in that one and carry on to do the fans all the way across like you have been and one, two, three, four, and simply once you get your fan in you just immediately jump to the next top one over here. So continue to do that and we're gonna fasten off. I'll let you fasten off and then I'm gonna show you the proper way of joining because I really think that the collar that I have in the original sample is upside down and I wanna show you a trick to look for in order to keep your collar on looking so that it looks normal. So I'll be right back in just a moment and we'll start up and fasten on the collar. So my collar is now done. Look how fabulous that looks. It actually turned out really nicely and so you have to bend it and put it around your project. Now one thing I noticed with my particular project, see how this is bending up like this? When I naturally uh, did it, see, see the back is just wanting to pull up and I think it's because my project is upside down. I think that I should have applied it on the other way. So what I'm recommending to you is that when you go to apply this to your project is that just do a preliminary idea. Now I'm the queen of liking to cut corners and in the pattern it says that you should pin this to the top. I will tell you I'm the queen of cutting corners and I would totally pin this to the top because what happens is that if you try to, to begin to affix to the top or front here you might pull it too much to the point where you are just having way too much left at the end and you will not finish properly. So what I'm recommending to you is that just pin a couple spots, well actually just pin a couple spots and determine that when you go to put it on is the collar gonna sit down properly and once you confirm that then just pin it all the way around and I'll show you that in just a moment. So I'm gonna make an educated guess. If you look at this one here, this is the right side and I can tell that because when I've crocheted it you can see how it kinda comes forward and when you turn it around you can see this is the back side. And what I'm recommending to you is that look at that and I would put it so that the back side is actually on the outside of this because it'll naturally curl inward. So I want you to grab a pin and just match it to the top and this is just gonna hold it into position as you crochet. So don't, you don't wanna go right into the stitches itself. Just come right underneath. Just, it's this, this is just a marker essentially just to hold this as you go. And so just move it along. There you go. So okay, so the collar is now pinned in and I'm just gonna adjust it here and I wanna see how it looks. Come like this. And so now I wanna turn it around and I think, see I think that's much better than the way that I originally did it. So now it's up to us to single crochet this into position and I'm gonna start off with the very beginning. We're actually gonna slip stitch this into position and I'm gonna start off in the very beginning and I'll show you how to do that. Once you understand this concept you're pretty well done for today. Okay grabbing the yarn I want an extra long tail so I can weave it in afterward with my darning needle and uh, we just want to start off. I'm gonna start off with a slip knot and I want to just match the very corner top to the corner of the, the collar. So go right into a stitch, don't go or a chain, don't go into a gapping space because it'll be really obvious. So let me just pull everything here and I just want to grab the string that's going to the yarn. I'm going to leave the other one on the other side 
and I will use that for darning needle later. So I'm just going to grab the yarn and pull through and through. Did I say darning needle? I'm going to grab the yarn and pull it through. So now I'm just going to make my way along the, the white and into the other side of the blue. And I'm just going along the top. So the top, remember how I asked you to turn that chain over? You're going to see chains here. If you did a conventional chain, you would not see that so nicely. So basically every chain on the collar is going to match the chain on the blue. Now you have to make a judgment call when you're going along. If you think that it's not stretching enough, you can, this is where you need to address it. So if you think that it's looking a little bit too sloppy, then you need to uh, do some extra, you know, just fancy footwork, I guess you can say, to be able to adjust it and get it into the right position. So this is where you need to do it. Just like so. So simply just go all around and just slip stitch it all together. So I'm going to leave that for you after I've just blabbed your ear off and I will be right back and I'm going to show you my final look and that will uh, end today's tutorial. So here's my finished sample for today. I just need to apply a button right in the very middle just like the original that I did just like so. Very easy. Make sure that when you're applying your buttons that you are extra secure to make sure that they don't fall off and become a choking hazard because I know some people are going to say that to me. <laughs> so what we have here is that I just want to point out this is the Ann Gettys yarn and you can see how much more yarn I have left. Because the yarn is a lightweight uh, three, there is a generous amount on there. I can probably at least do two outfits with just one ball with this with the, doing the six month size. And for that alone, you know, for the price of the ball of yarn, getting two outfits for one ball, I think is absolutely brilliant. So I should turn it around just to show you the back end. Just like so. That's coming from the yarn ball. That's not from my work. <laughs> so. Yeah, here we go. So there you go. So I'm really excited about that and thank you so much for joining me on this very long tutorial. This has been a tutorial request to do an upgraded baby sweater and this is absolutely wonderful. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. This is baby month of January 2014 and we have a lot more lined up for you today. Bye.